If you haven't heard of Gravistar before, they are a company that is known for making products with really cool and detailed designs with lots of gimmicks. I was very interested in their Mars Pro speakers, but the local stores here are selling them at ridiculous prices, making a price to performance ratio not quite worthwhile here. Now, with Gravistar entering the gaming peripherals market with their first wireless gaming mouse, I was lucky enough to be offered the opportunity to, to test out an engineering sample in exchange for my feedback and opinions. And just seeing how cool this thing looks, how could I say no? And no, I'm not getting paid to say anything. Plus, I'm also curious to see if this is just another art display piece or can it actually be used in competitive gaming? So hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel and let's go over the specs of this alien looking bug while I share my usage feedback and thoughts on Gravistar's $80 Mercury M2 gaming mouse. In the box that the engineering sample was sent with, there's just the mouse, a 2.4 GHz USB 8 adapter which could be stored underneath the mouse, and a nicely braided low friction USB A to C cable for charging and use in wired mode. For the retail edition, I'm told that it will also come with an additional USB A to C adapter, replacement mouse feed, anti-slip grip stickers, a microfiber cleaning cloth, and a signature card. Taking the mouse out of the box, the size and shape feels about the same as two of my favorite lightweight gaming mouse. The engineering sample that I received is made from PVC plastic and weighs at 81 grams, but Gravistar has reconfirmed with me that the retail version will be 2 grams lighter at 79 grams. And at 79 grams, it is 2 grams heavier than the Razer Cobra Pro and 5 grams heavier than the Viper Ultimate. So the weight felt just right at home for me. There is also a magnesium alloy shell version under the M1 Mercury Pro model name, which is 9 grams heavier but 10 times nicer. So if weight isn't a big deal, you could also check out that one as well. But either way, the construction and build quality is surprisingly sturdy for a plastic considering the design. Trust me, I tried squeezing as hard as I could and there is barely any flex or creaking sounds coming from the mouse. As for the design, the hollowed out look with the large holes on the mouse did not prevent me from using either palm, claw or fingertip grip. But because of the size of the M2 Mercury, it might be a little bit small for palm grip for those with larger hands like myself. I mostly use a claw grip when gaming, and I did sometimes find my ring finger hurting a bit when gripping the mouse too hard during intense matches. But the retail version will have slight changes to these areas of the mouse to alleviate this problem for fingertip and claw grip users. So that's definitely a plus. As for the other advertised feature of this hollowed out design, is that it is supposed to help improve the airflow and keeping your hands cool during gaming. But I honestly don't feel my hands being any more cooler or sweating any less compared to when using my other mouse. But either way, the whole patterns on this design makes this mouse easy to clean and looks quite sick like it's something from outer space that fell onto my gaming setup. What do you guys think of the design? Do you like it or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Moving on to the internals of the mouse, the Mercury M2 mouse uses a popular PixArt 3395DM sensor that gives the Mercury the tracking performance and customizability such as ripple control and liftoff distance similar to many high performance gaming mouse. For those not familiar with this sensor, it has a customizable DPI of up to 26,000, a tracking speed of up to 650 inches per second, and is similar if not identical to the sensor used in some Razer gaming mouse. The Mercury M2 mouse also has a polling rate of up to 1000Hz over both the 2.4GHz wireless connection and wired mode, and a Bluetooth 5.1 connection for non-latency sensitive use which will give you significantly improved battery life. And talking about battery life, the Mercury M2 gaming mouse has quite some impressive numbers. The retail version is stated to be able to deliver up to 90 hours of battery life over 2.4 GHz connection and up to 135 hours over Bluetooth. And even though I cannot double check Gravistar's numbers, I believe it will easily be able to achieve it. Because even with a 350mAh battery on the engineering sample that I have, with the RGB lights set to turn off when the mouse is moving, I'm already getting about 78 hours of battery life. Compared to many RGB wireless gaming mouse that I have owned, this is definitely in the upper range and one that I do not need to charge constantly. As for the buttons, there are a total of 6 buttons, with the left and right mouse buttons using Kyle mechanical switches that are rated for up to 80 million clicks. Five of the buttons are reprogrammable via Gravistar software and the settings can be stored under up to four profiles on the onboard memory. Now that I mentioned the software, 
Let's start with this as the first area that could be improved. During the past three months, I found that the software was the most confusing aspect re regarding this product. There are many customizable features that allow you to adjust settings of the mouse in the software, which is a great thing. But as some of it are labeled in abbreviations without any tooltips of what's being changed and what it does, it could be confusing for end users. I mean, I understand that I could be using the beta version, so maybe the final release software will be labeled for easier use. The second part that I would like to be improved is slightly increasing the thickness and adding a bit more PTFE feed in those areas underneath the mouse. I mean, it's not a serious problem when using the M Mercury M2 on a hard mouse pad, but when I'm using a soft mouse pad, sometimes I will feel that there are extra resistance coming from these mentioned areas. Then again, it could be just that my unit is an early engineering sample. The third and last area is more of a personal preference, but I think could make this product even more attractive is that the mouse could have one more additional button to switch between the stored onboard profiles. This is so that you don't need to do it via the software if you plan to use this on multiple devices. I personally just think that it would be a nice addition. But overall, I feel that Gravistar did a great job with their first wireless gaming mouse by including so many useful features that usually is only found in high-end gaming mouse and only asking $80 for it, it actually is quite a good deal. Because not only will, will you be getting a mouse that performs, you will also be getting an art or display piece featuring Gravistar's otherworldly design. And to further sweeten that deal for you, Gravistar is offering an additional 20% off discount throughout January 23rd if you use this coupon code during checkout on their website. I'll leave the link coupon code and details in the description, so act fast. And no, I don't get paid if you purchase one. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed today's video and thank you as always for watching. If you find today's video helpful, hit that like button and share it with a friend as it will greatly help me and this channel. And I'll see you again in the next video. Ciao!